I think it's a genuinely radical offer is going to double the amount that we spend on childcare by 27, 28. We're expanding the offer for parents. At the moment, you get means from the end of maternity leave right up to reception, you'll get help with your childcare, which saves something like on average six and a half thousand pounds to your normal family every year. And we're increasingly learning as time goes on how crucial those early years are. So is there anything in place to make that particular career path more appealing? The most important thing for them is their staff. So they're not going to put in place uh, working practices which they think will make staff leave. So I've got some settings who say, do you know what, we don't need to use that ratio, we're not going to do it, it's not for us. And I've got some who said, actually it's really helpful because we'd like to send people on some training occasionally. The first uh, expansion kicks in in April next year, which is where if you're a parent of a two-year-old, you get 15 hours, and then over the course of the next year and a half, we'll be rolling out the full 30 hours. So it's coming up quick. And we're rolling. Welcome to the Parenting Truths podcast. Today, I'm joined by Conservative MP and Minister for Children, Families and Wellbeing, Minister Catino. Thanks for joining me, Minister. Thanks so much for having me. So I wanted to have a chat today about the recent budget because within that it was announced that there's going to be a new childcare offer here in the UK. So could we kick off by maybe giving a quick overview of the new offer and maybe how that compares with the existing offer? Yes, sure. So um, one of the things that I found talking to parents and families about the challenges that they face was that childcare was becoming a major barrier. We know that lots of families were struggling with the cost. So what we've done, I think, is a genuinely radical offer is going to double the amount that we spend on childcare by 27, 28. We're expanding the offer for parents. At the moment, you get uh, 30 hours of your working parent for three to four year olds and we're taking that right down to nine months so that means from the end of maternity leave right up to reception you'll get help with your childcare which saves something like on average six and a half thousand pounds to your normal family every year. Yeah when I reached out to my followers one of the um positives that came back about the offer was that now you know families working two jobs for example um, but those working part-time now had a lot more money potentially available to do more things with their family and a few people actually reached out and said it opened the door to actually considering having more children because at the moment they could oh. only really afford to have one which is which is quite a positive um, step that is forward. That's the best review I could have hoped for that's that's wonderful. <laughs> so do childcare settings across the UK currently have the infrastructure in place to deal with the expanded childcare entitlements? And if not, what measures are in place to tackle this? Well, this is my current work because what we're doing is going to be the single largest ever expansion into childcare. So it's a major, major uh, project for us. And we'll be looking at everything. Workforce is, I think, the biggest challenge because uh, there are settings at the moment which already have shortages of workforce. So that's what I'll be spending a lot of my time on. But we'll also okay. be looking at funding, premises, everything to make sure that we can deliver on time. Um, because it is, it's coming up soon. With the first uh, expansion kicks in in April next year, which is where if you are a parent of a two-year-old, you get 15 hours. And then over the course of the next year and a half, we'll be rolling out the full 30 hours. So it's coming up quick. One thing I wanted to touch on, uh, was actually staff turnover. So obviously many nurseries and childcare settings report a high staff turnover, primarily you know, due to low wages and maybe lack of career progression. Um, and it, I, personally, I think it's a real shame because you know, it's such an important job. You know, those working in childcare during those early years can have such an important impact on the lives and development of our little ones. And we're increasingly learning as time goes on how crucial those early years are. So is there anything in place to make that particular career path more appealing? Well, yes, this has absolutely been the challenge. And so we are looking at funding, which I think is, is one of the most important aspects. Okay. Uh, some of that will kick in this year. But as I said, we're going to double the amount that we, we invest into childcare um, over the next few years. Some of it is about qualifications. I go around and talk to nurseries uh, and childminders all the time. And I think the uh, challenge at the moment is being able to make sure that people can progress uh, and feel that value of that job as they increase their, their learnings. So we've already set out some flexibilities uh, in the last few weeks, which will help people to make that progression. And we're looking at uh, lots of routes in where you can learn on the job. So one of our highest levels of qualifications is called level six. 
Um, and at the moment, we've got fully funded courses to, to that sort of at that graduate level, so to create a degree equivalent um, qualification. Okay. But we don't get the take up that we, we would want, to be honest. And so one of the things we're looking at is how we can make an apprenticeship so you can learn on the job, how you can make it attractive. We'll be doing a recruitment campaign to tell everyone, uh, boy, this is a wonderful sector to work in. Yeah, I guess that comes hand in hand. Maybe there's a bit of like a rebrand piece in there as well to actually showcase that, that it is an attractive career path for, for people. So, yeah, that's positive. Um, and finally, I just wanted to dive into, obviously with the new offer, the staff to toddler limit is increasing. So do you see that this potentially making the childcare setting less safe? Obviously, kids will have less one-on-one -on -one interactions and obviously this could potentially lead to higher staff turnover again because, you know, employees are working, are being worked harder and inevitably placed under uh, more stress. Also, the, the ratio that we're changing is for two-year-olds. So it was um, that you had one staff member per four children, and it's going up to five. Um, and the thing that I would say is it's not a mandatory ratio at all. It's about giving the settings flexibility. Uh, and we went to go and talk to lots of different countries about how they did it. And actually, this takes us in line with our international peers. So it's not, it's not out of the ordinary. Um, and the thing that they would say is it just gives us that extra flexibility. So, for example, if you've got people around pick-up time or if you've got people who want to take some time off for training, it just means the setting can make more of a choice about how they use their staff. Uh, so it's not going to compromise safety or quality at all. It just gives those settings a bit more choice in how they're using people. Okay, so, yeah, it's, it's not a target. It's just a, a maximum capacity. No, should they need that level of flexibility exactly and to your point of you know if you if you think about a, a nursery the most important thing for them is their staff so they're not going to put in place uh, working practices which they think will make staff leave so i've got some settings who say do you know what we don't need to use that ratio we're not going to do it it's not for us and i've got some who said actually it's really helpful because we'd like to send people on some training occasionally and actually we think we've got some cohorts of children where it would work so it's completely up to them to make those choices and we trust them to make the right choice to make sure that they can keep their staff happy which again is the most important thing to them yeah i know for me and my wife we checked out we were fortunate to have our little one home for three years with us but when the time came we actually reached out and met with many different nurseries and actually it was the individual staff members that tipped it for us so yeah having um having people motivated to work is, is, is really important so that's that's a positive um well thank you for your time minister it's great to see some steps in the right direction like i said earlier once i when i reached out to my followers there was obviously that they were open and honest with some of their concerns that we've spoken about today but as i mentioned there was a number of people that did reach out to say that this offer will be life-changing for them and it will either allow them to grow their family or allow them to actually do more together as a family but of course some parents contacted me um, with concerns around the fact that they maybe felt pressured to return to work um, a little more with the new offer. But I guess, from your point of view, the offer is there um, should people wish to utilise it. Yes, absolutely. This is not about pressurising anyone. This is all about parental choice. So it's up to you to take the offer if you want it. And I would just say that the thing that I heard really, really clearly from families that did want to work is that often childcare was a barrier. Uh, and that's what yeah. we're trying to that's what we're trying to make sure doesn't happen. So I don't want anybody to feel like that childcare or access to childcare is a barrier for them um, leaving a, a living a fulfilling life and, and, and pursuing the career that they want. So it's absolutely for parents to choose and they can make the right choice for their families. Okay, well, th thank you for your time. I appreciate you're, you're very busy. So I'm excited to get this conversation out um, and to start engaging in the conversation with my followers about this. So thank you very much. My pleasure, and thank you for everything that you do. It's a great podcast. I'm very pleased to have joined. Oh, thank you. Cheers. Cheers, bye.